I'd like to take a look at some examples of applying the AC method to factor a trinomial. So the AC method, it refers to kind of this general form for writing a trinomial, AX squared plus BX plus C, where X is our variable. Uh, X doesn't always have to be the variable, we'll see in the examples, uh, but the A refers to the coefficient of the squared term, whatever the variable is, and C refers to the coefficient, uh, the constant coefficient. So, to apply this process, uh, let's look at an example. If we have 4y squared minus 16y plus 15, the first step, I want to identify A and C, so 4 and 15 would be A and C, I want to multiply them together. 4 times 15 is 60, positive 60. And then I want to find a factor pair of positive 60 that adds to equal the, the value of b. So I want to find a factor pair of positive 60 that adds to equal negative 16. So because 60 is positive, I know that the two factors have to have the same sign. And because 16 is negative, it tells me that that sign is going to be negative. So the two factors that I'm looking for are going to be negative. So we can be systematic about this. You know, some of you may have an idea what, what the factors are going to be kind of you know, right away, if you think about what adds to negative 16 and, and it would be a factor pair of 60. But if you don't think of that right away, we, we could just write the list, you know, starting with 1 uh, and 60, negative 1 and negative 60 negative 2 and negative 30, negative 3 and negative 20. And so kind of thinking about what these are going to add up to, it'll be negative 61, negative 32, negative 23. So I should keep going. Uh, negative 4 and negative 15 would add to negative 19. Negative 5 and negative 12 would add to negative 17. And negative 6 and negative 10 adds, of course, to negative 16. So you know, if you see it, you can kind of jump to that right away, but you know, if not, we can work through the list. So negative 6 and negative 10 is the factor pair that we want because it adds up to that middle number. So what that means is that, you know, in particular, negative 16, it equals negative 10 plus negative 6. And so I can rewrite negative 16x as negative 6x you know, plus negative 10x, or, or negative 6x minus 10x. And I want to do that and, and sort of replace that expression you know, in the middle. Oh, and I, and I should say, sorry about this, <laughs> I switched my variable to y, so I, I should use y's here, um, of course, uh, to add up to negative 16y. So, so step three is to rewrite the expression as 4y squared, and then instead of negative 16y, I'm going to do negative 6y, minus 10y. Right, so just rewriting that with an equivalent expression but using those two terms that we found using the factors that multiply to equal positive 60 and add to equal negative 16. And then in the third step, uh, sorry, the fourth step, I can factor by grouping. So if I look at the common factors of the first two terms, I can factor out a 2, a 2y, two and then 2y minus 3 is left behind, right? because y is common to both of those factors, and um, both of the numbers are even. And in the second two, I can factor out a negative 5, and then what's left behind is a positive 2y and minus 3. Because right? factoring out a negative 5, in order to get back a positive 15, it changes the sign of, of positive 15 to negative 3. Uh, three. So factoring by grouping works because we chose, you know, because we ended up with this special pair, you know, because we used negative six and negative ten, factoring by grouping works. And I have one common factor of two y minus three. You know, two y minus three is a common factor of both of those groups. And then what's left behind from the first group is two y, and what's left behind from the second group is minus five. So my final factorization is 2y minus 3 times 2y minus 5. We can, of course, always check by um, foiling. So if you're nervous or, or, you know, in general, it's a good habit to check when you have a way to do that. 
uh, we can check by foiling if we multiply out uh, 2y times 2y is 4y squared 2y times negative 5 is negative 10y the inside terms negative 3 times 2y would be negative 6y and then of course negative 3 times negative 5 is positive 15 so those middle terms add up to negative 16 and we we found the right factorization I encourage you to take a few minutes pause the video and try to work on these two trinomials try to factor these two trinomials using the AC method I should mention um, that trinomials don't always factor we, you know we can't always uh, factor things um, and so as you're working on these two examples not to give too much away I hope but only one of the two factors o only one of those two polynomials factors um, so so think about that um, uh, in a, just a moment I'll, I'll work through the answer but I would encourage you to pause the video first to uh, try the answer you know, to try to factor it on your own alright I hope you paused the video and took a moment to try to factor these uh, using the AC method so um, let's see what the answer should be so, so if I walk through the, the problem here a times C uh, is 9 times negative 3 this time so I get a negative 27 and I'd like to find a factor pair of negative 27 that adds to equal positive 26 so since since I want to find a negative value I know that one number needs to be negative and the other needs to be positive and because I want them to add to be a positive 26 I know that the smaller factor should be negative so that when I add them together I get a, a positive result so I could work through that there aren't actually too many factorizations for 20 uh, for 27 negative 1 and positive 27 and negative 3 and positive 9 and if I look at those though um, you know so if I look at those uh, obviously the, the first one is the one that I want because if I add those up I get a positive 26 so now we're gonna rewrite the middle term 9 P squared plus 27 P minus 1 P you know, minus P minus 3 or you know we could write it the other way with the minus p you know coming first and the 27p you know coming second but uh, either way when we factor by grouping we should get the same final answer so this way i can factor out a 9p and what's left behind is p plus 3 the second one it's a little bit tricky i have a negative p and a negative 3 so i want to factor out a negative 1 and then what's left behind is p plus 3 because if I factor a negative from both of those terms then the minus that was in front of the 3 it becomes a plus because you know, the, the minus sign is now out in front so p plus 3 is one of the factors and 9p minus 1 is the other and again we can check that by foiling I said a moment ago that not all polynomials factor and so you may be inclined to think that this one doesn't factor and, it, and in fact it doesn't um, factor so this is actually called a prime polynomial because it doesn't factor you know similar to the way prime numbers uh, don't factor into smaller pieces this polynomial doesn't factor into smaller pieces so to see why you know we can quickly just kinda check this out if, if I multiply a times c 25 times 4 is 100 and then what I want to look for are the factor pairs of 100. I want to try to find a factor pair of 100 that adds to equal 19. Since 100 is positive, a times c is positive, and 19 is positive, I know that the factors are going to be positive factors uh, if they exist. So 1 times 100 is obviously 101. 2 times 50 adds up to 52. Uh, 3 doesn't go evenly into 100, but 4 times 25 would give me 29. Uh, 5 times 20 adds up to 25 6 7 8 and 9 don't divide evenly into 100 but 10 times 10 is 100 but of course that's that adds up to 20 um, and then that's it right so, so nothing adds up to 19 uh, so that tells us that there just isn't a factorization there's no way to factor this particular trinomial if we had had a 20 instead of a 19 then it would have worked but 19 uh, is no good so we end up with a prime polynomial 
I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching.